What I'm going to present today is going to be interesting. What it is, it deals with the masquerade that Satan has proposed through the centuries, even in Bible times, a false ruler of the universe. We have to keep in mind that Satan was jealous of Jesus and God and he wanted to be the head in heaven. And since he couldn't do that, he has arranged to bring a great counterfeit. But we can't know the counterfeit if we don't know what the original is. So the title of our sermon today is Jesus the King of the Heavens. The subtitle might be Satan's Counterfeit, The Queen of the Heavens. Somebody might say, is that really in the Bible? Yes, it is. We're going to show it to you. I hope you have your Bibles or you're watching on the screen this morning. I want you to turn in your Bibles this morning to John 1, verses 1 and 2 and 3, and verse 14. It says there, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. And without him was not anything made that was made. Then in verse 14 it says, The word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Now who in the world was that? Who was made flesh and dwelt among us? Jesus. Jesus. So Jesus is the word. So we're going to go back to Genesis. I mean, Going back to John 1, 1 again, and look at that again. In the beginning was the Word. Back to Genesis, or John 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word, and who's the Word? Jesus. Jesus. And the Word was with God, that's God the Father. And the Word was God, that means Jesus was called God too. And then the next verse, the same was in the beginning with God. And then the next verse, all things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. Now, a lot of people really don't have much of an idea of who Jesus is. A lot of pre people become surprised when they find out from the Holy Scripture that Jesus is called God. But now turn with me to Colossians. Where are we going? Colossians chapter 1 and verse 16. It says, By, by Him were all things created that are in heaven, that are on earth, Visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And then verse 17, he is before all things and by him all things consist. Who is that? Jesus. Jesus. Remember John 1, 3 says all things were made by him. He's the creator. By him all things were created in heaven and in earth. Just think of it. Not only this earth, but heaven and earth. A lot of people are surprised. They know that Jesus is the Savior. 
but they didn't know that he was the creator, that he made us. Hebrews chapter 1 tells us exactly the same thing. So we're turning over now to Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 2. It says, Hath in these last days spoken us unto us by whom? His son. His son. Who is that? Jesus. Jesus. Whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. It says here, Jesus made the worlds. Not just this world, but the worlds. There are other worlds out there. Then in verse 3, it says, Who being the brightness of his glory, the express image of his person, upholding all things by his power, when he himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on heaven, on high. That's Jesus. Looked like the Father, had the brightness of the Father. He looked just like him, the express image of his person. He purged us of our sins. How did he do that? Through his death. Now in verse 6, it says something else. I was having a Bible study with somebody that didn't believe that Jesus was divine. And when he read this verse, he almost jumped out of his seat. Notice verse 6. Again, when he bringeth in the first begotten in the world, he saith, Let all the what? Angels worship him. Just think of it. According to this verse, Jesus is supposed to be what? Worship. Did I make that up or is it in the Bible? All right. Now, in verse 8, it says, But unto the Son, he saith, Thy throne, O God. It's talking about Jesus. Under the Son, that's Jesus. Thy throne, O God. They're calling him God as well as God the Father. Did I make it up? Or is Jesus God? Is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. When he bringeth, and under the sun he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. How long is his throne to exist? Forever. A scepter of righteousness is a scepter of thy kingdom. Now, he's not only our creator who is to be worshipped, but he's also our Savior. When the disciples were taken prisoner by the leaders, the apostles made it clear that he is our Savior. Turn with me to Acts chapter 4 and verse 10. You may want to jot these down because this is startling to a lot of people. They didn't know that Jesus was called the Word. They didn't know that He created all things. They didn't know that He was to be worshipped. They didn't know that He was next to God the Father. They didn't know He was called God. But know what the apostles said. Be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone, it says in the next verse. This is the stone which is set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Then in Acts 4.12 it says, neither Is there, come on now, salvation in any other? 
for there's none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Isn't that something? There's no other name. Nobody else can be our Savior. Nobody else in the Bible can be our Savior. Only Jesus. Now you and I cannot really cannot really comprehend the full meaning of how Jesus suffered in agony on the Garden of Gethsemane. He agonized. He suffered. He suffered for a thankless humanity that didn't appreciate Him. That nailed Him to the cross. The humanity didn't even want to be saved. Yet he was loved so much by his father that he humbled himself and came down here and died. He not only became a servant, but he died for us. When Jesus was beaten, he was spit upon. The crown of thorns was thrust down on his head, crushed down on his head. A robe was placed upon him. And they knelt down before him and mocked him and made fun of him. But they didn't know that they were actually making fun of the one who had created the world. Amazing. They were mocking him because he was the king of the Jews. They didn't know that one day He would come in dazzling glory and take us to heaven. The Bible says when he comes in dazzling glory that every knee shall bow. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 10, we read that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Shabbat. Did I make that up? It's there. Every knee. Shabbat. Of things in heaven, things in earth, and things under the earth. That every tongue, verse 11, every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. When Jesus was walking along trying to carry that heavy cross, it became too heavy. That they got Simon, a black man, to carry the cross on the hill of Golgotha. It's a big hill. Had to drag it up the hill. Then they laid him down on the cross and they took nails and hammer and pierced his hands for you and I. We can't imagine what he went through. Then the people made fun of him and said, he saved other people. Let him come down off the cross and save himself. He could have. He could have come down off the cross. Amen. He could have come right down and flashed his glory, but he didn't. Why? Because if he had come down off the cross, we couldn't be saved. Can you fathom that? If he'd come down off the cross, can't do it both ways, he can't die for us, and yet save himself. Two things that Jesus couldn't do is save himself and save us. It was either one or the other. And he decided he would save us. Isn't that something? The The king of glory. The king of the heavens. But there's a counterfeit. Did you know that? There's a counterfeit. We're going to read about it. Above his head was a sign put in three languages. 
the king of the Jews. When really, he was the king of the universe. Amen. Satan hates Christ, the king of the universe. He is determined that Jesus will be replaced by a man Not by a man, but by a woman. Did you know that? Did you know it's in the Bible? A woman. And you know what her name was? And is? Even today, you know what her name is? Does anybody know what her name is? The Queen of the Heavens. When I was a missionary in Ireland, <clears throat> it was 95% Roman Catholics. And so we had a school there in Galway, Ireland. And 85% of the students were Roman Catholics. Even the Baptist preacher sent his children to our school, our Adventist school. Well, we tried to do what we could to interest people in our wonderful Seventh-day Adventist message that we love so much. And you know, one day, I visited the local pharmacy. When I went in there, I talked to the lady that ran the pharmacy. You know, in Ireland, you know what the name for a pharmacy is? It's called the chemist. So I went in to see the chemist, and I asked the lady in charge, would it be possible for me to put this poster up? We're going to have a health lecture. Everybody wants to know how to have good health, so that's the entering wedge. In the country where people don't understand about our wonderful message. She said, yes, you could put your poster up, but she, said, she knew I was a Seventh-day Adventist minister. But she said, I am disturbed by you Seventh-day Adventists because you don't honor Our Lady. You know who she was talking about? Mary. The rest of the world, it's called the Queen of the Heavens. I explained to her, well, we believe that Jesus was born of a virgin. We believe that Mary was a good woman. But I said, we don't believe, and we believe that she's the mother of Jesus. One of the favorite sayings in Ireland is that she's the mother of God. Isn't that interesting? Well, Jesus is called God. So they're trying to uplift Mary above God because she's the mother of God. I asked her if she had a, a Roman Catholic Bible. I said, when you go home today, look up the Ten Commandments in Exodus 20. I explained to her that God does not want us to kneel down or genuflect before the image of Mary. Not, the Bible says, Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children under the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Now if you come over to my town in Mesa, where do I live? In Mesa, at the address of 1562 East Baseline, there is a cemetery there. You know what the name of the cemetery is? The Queen of Heaven Cemetery. The Queen of Heaven. What do they want to do? They want to 
raise Mary above the heavens. Where did this term, the Queen of Heavens, come from? Did it originate in the Catholic Church? No. Did you know it's in the Bible, in the Old Testament, long before there was ever the Catholic Church? Would you like to see it? How many would like to see it? Oh, I knew you would. <laughs> Turn with me to Jeremiah. Chapter 44, verse 17. Maybe you ought to look at it at your own Bible, not just on the screen. I want you to know it's really there, okay? Write the text down so you can look it up again. Jeremiah 44, 17. 44, 17. When Jeremiah talked to the people about worshiping this heathen goddess, he told them they should not be worshiping this heathen goddess. She went by different names, but one of the names was the Queen of Heavens. In Jeremiah, what was the response of the people? The people said, we will certainly do whatsoever thing goeth for out of our own mouth. We're going to do what we want to do. To burn incense unto the, what? Queen of heaven. In a little bit, I'm going to tell you a little bit where this, this originated. And some of the different names besides Queen of Heaven. We're going to worship. We're going to burn incense to the Queen of Heaven. We're going to pour out drink offerings unto her as we have done. We and our fathers. See, another generation had gone by and they were worshiping the Queen of the Heavens. Our fathers, our kings, our princes in the cities of Judah and the streets of Jerusalem. For then, when? When we were worshiping the queen of the heavens. We had plenty of victuals, Plenty to eat. And we were well. And saw no evil. But since we left off to burn incense. To the queen of heaven. To pour out drink offerings unto her. We have wanted all things. And have been consumed by the sword. And by the famine. And when we burn incense to the queen of heavens. And poured out drink offerings unto her. Did we make her cakes. Uh-uh. What's that? Did we make her cakes? Anybody ever heard of the cakes? To the queen of the heavens? What is it? What do we call them? Hot cross buns. Did you know that? Where did the hot cross buns come? It was the cakes. We did make her cakes to worship her and pour out drink offerings unto her without our men. And then reading on, in verse 20, Then Jeremiah said unto all the people, to the men and the women, to the people which had given him that answer, saying, The incense that you burn in the cities of Judah and the streets of Jerusalem, you and your fathers and your kings and your princes and the people, of the land did not the Lord remember them and came it not into his mind so that the Lord could no longer be bare because of the evil of your doings. Was this something good to worship the queen of the heavens? No. Because of the abominations which ye committed, therefore is your land a desolation. Why were they having trouble? They thought that when they worshipped the queen of the heavens, they were having good times. But the reason they were having bad times now is because they had worshipped and were still worshipping the queen of the heavens. Your land is a desolation, an astonishment, a curse without an inhabitant. 
has at this day. Because you burned incense, because you sinned against the Lord, have not obeyed the voice of the Lord, nor walked in his law, nor in his statute, nor in his testimony. Therefore this evil is happened unto you. Jeremiah made it clear that the evil had happened to them. Not because they weren't worshipping the Queen of the Heaven, but because they were worshipping the Queen of the Heavens. Isn't that interesting? Did you ever see that text before? Well, you better read your Bible through every year. How many times have I read my Bible through? Not boasting. I started when I was a teenage age of this young lady here. Legend? How old are you, Legend? What? 17? Okay, I'm 86 now. How many times have I read my Bible through? About 70 times. See, this won't be a strange text to you if you read your Bible through every year and you'll wonder what it means. Verse 24. Moreover, Jeremiah said unto all the people, to all the women, hear the word of the Lord, all Judah that are in the land of Egypt. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, saying, You and your wives have spoken with your mouths and fulfilled with your hand, saying, We will surely burn. Uh, perform our vows that we have vowed to burn incense to the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto her ye will surely accomplish your vows and therefore perform your vows where did this come from i'm going to tell you some startling things write it down so you can remember it there was a sun god called baal b-a-a-l there was a moon goddess called Astarte. Another name for Astarte is Ishtar. Write it down. It's spelt I-S-H-T-A-R. Which today is called what? Easter. Isn't that interesting? Did you know that was in the Bible? In Edersheim's History of the Old Testament, Volume 5, Chapter 14, we read that the religion of Jezebel, the wicked queen Jezebel, became the worship of the land of Israel. Ahab built in Samaria a temple to the Baal, the sun god, in which he arranged Erected not only an altar, but as we gather from 2 Kings 3, verse 2, and 10, verse 27, one of those pillars, which they called a phallic symbol. A phallic symbol. If you don't know what it is, write it down. Look it up in the dictionary. This was a worship of sex. The moon goddess Astarte, another name was Ishtar, was part of the religion of Phoenicia. In the book The Two Babylons, which you can get from the ABC, we read how the worship of the sun and the moon developed. In Egypt, this goddess was called not Ishtar, it was called Isis, almost the same. And this was a goddess to nourish the earth. Now there's a famous man by the name of David Meyer who did research on the subject of Easter. This is what he wrote. Easter is a day that's to be honored by, that is honored by nearly all of contemporary Christianity and is used to celebrate Christmas. Uh, the resurrection of Jesus. The holiday often involves a church service at sunrise. A feast which includes Easter ham. We'll tell you in a minute why that was. 
decorated eggs, we'll tell you why that, and stories about rabbits. Is this the day when Jesus, it is the day that Jesus arose, but where did all the strange customs come from? which have nothing to do with the resurrection of our Savior. The purpose of this is to help answer these questions, to help those who seek truth to draw their own conclusions. The first thing we must understand is that professing Christians were not only the ones, not the only ones who celebrated a festival called Easter. I-S-H-T-A-R which is pronounced Easter, was the day that commemorated the resurrection of one of their gods that they called Tammuz. Did you know Tammuz is in the Bible too? This person was supposed to be resurrected and so they, Satan had a counterfeit for the resurrection of Jesus before he ever came to this earth and died and was resurrected. Tammuz. And he was Tammuz, get this, was believed to be the only begotten son of the moon goddess Ishtar and the sun god Baal. You read all through the Old Testament, whenever the children of Israel apostatized, they went into Baal worship. There was a man in ancient times called Nimrod. Ever heard of Nimrod? If you read your Bible through, you know. He was the grandson of one of Noah's sons called Ham. Ham had a son named Cush who married a woman called Samaramus. Cush and Samaramus then had a son and named him Nimrod. How many of you have ever heard this story before? Few of you have. Okay. After the death of his father, Nimrod married his own mother and became a powerful king. The Bible tells us of this man, Nimrod, in Genesis 10, 8 to 10, Cush began, begat Nimrod, he began to be a mighty one on the earth, he was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Wherefore it is said, even as Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord, the beginning of his kingdom was Babel. That's where the Tower of Babel came from. And Eric and Akkad and Kalna in the land of Shinar. Nibrod, Nimrod became a god-man to the people. And Samaramus, his wife and mother... became a powerful queen of ancient Babylon. Nimrod was eventually killed by an enemy and his body was cut in pieces and sent to various parts of the kingdom except for one part that couldn't be found. That missing part was the reproductive organ. No wonder they have the phallic symbol that they worship. Samaramus claimed that Nimrod could not come back to life without it and told the people of Babylon that Nimrod had ascended to the sun who was now to be called Baal, the sun god. Queen Samaramus also proclaimed that Baal would be present on earth in the form of a flame whether candle or lamp, when used as part of worship. No wonder we use, some people use candles as part of their worship. Samaramus was creating a mystery religion. And with the help of Satan, she set herself up as goddess. Samaramus claimed that she was immaculately conceived. You ever heard that before? She taught that the moon was a goddess that went through a 
day cycle and ovulated when full. She further claimed that she came down from the moon in a giant egg. Where did the eggs come for, from in Easter? A giant egg that Samaramus was supposed to have come down from heaven. And the moon egg became known as Easter's egg. See how the devil set up a false substitute for Jesus, the king of the universe? It's not a king, but a queen. Can you believe that? <clears throat> well, notice this. Easter became pregnant and claimed that it was the rays of the sun god Baal that caused her to conceive. The sun that she brought forth was called Tammuz. Tammuz was noted to be especially fond of rabbits. And they became sacred in the ancient religion because Tammuz was believed to be a son of the sun god Baal. Tammuz, like his father, became a hunter. The day came when Tammuz was killed by a wild pig. So why do they eat pork, Easter ham? Turn with me to Ezekiel chapter 8 and verse 14. Then he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house, which was toward the north. And behold, there sat women weeping for Tammuz. Remember, she was supposed to have been killed by a wild pig. And that's the reason that they eat the pig on Easter Sunday. Queen Easter told the people that Tammuz was now ascended to his father, Baal and the two of them would be the worshippers in the sacred candle or the lamp flame as, get this, Father, Son, and Spirit. Another counterfeit. Easter was now worshipped as the mother of God. And if you go to Ireland, they ask you one of the first things, do you believe that Mary was the mother of God? The mother of God and queen of heaven. She continued to build her mystery religion. The queen told the worshippers that when Tammuz was killed by the wild pig, some of his blood fell on the stump of an evergreen tree, and the stump grew into a full tree overnight. you believe that? This made the evergreen tree sacred by the blood of Tammuz. She also proclaimed a 40-day period of time of sorrow each year prior to the anniversary of the death of Tammuz. Ever heard of 40 days of what? Lent. During this time, no meat was to be eaten. Worshippers were to meditate upon the sacred mysteries of Baal and Tammuz and to make the sign of the cross in front of their hearts as they worship. Sign of the cross. Any of these things new? It's old stuff. They also ate sacred cakes with the marking of a T or a cross on the top. And thus we have hot cross buns. Every year on the first Sunday, remember when it happens, after the first full moon, you remember? When the moon was full, it was supposed to be ovulating. First Sunday after the first full moon is when we make the date of Easter. Did you know that? 
you check your calendar. One year it's one day, another year it's another day. It's not on the same day every year. There could be up to three weeks difference in the date. If it was going to be kept in honor of the resurrection, you would be on the Passover weekend. But there's nothing in the Bible that says we're supposed to keep it. The holy day is the day of resurrection. What is the memorial for the resurrection? What do we celebrate as Seventh-day Adventists for the memorial of the resurrection? Baptism. When we, like we did today, lower the person down in the water, they're being buried. When they come up out of the water, they're being resurrected. This is symbolic of the belief that someday if we die, we will be resurrected too and go to heaven. What a wonderful, wonderful hope we have. But the memorial for the resurrection is baptism, not Easter Sunday. There's so much more to tell. I'm going to skip over because my time, the clock says it's time to stop. May God help us to realize how paganism has crept into Christianity. And we should be aware of what we're teaching our children. Amen. Let us restore Jesus as the creator. Let's restore him as the Savior. Let's restore him as the King of the heavens. Not allow a substitute Queen of the heavens, Easter, to take the place. We don't honor Easter. There's nothing in the Bible that says we're to honor it. Let us not feel that we need to celebrate Easter. Let us restore the worship of our Savior as the King of the universe. Let us prepare for the day when Jesus will come as the true King. And all the clouds of glory as the King of the universe. And we will fall on our knees and worship Him and go to heaven together. How many want to prepare for that day? When he comes as king of glory, king of the universe, in his dazzling glory, every knee bowing, if you want that, would you stand with me?